Hello friends and welcome to Vlogmas Day 5. already and we are in the car we are still in the state of New York and we are on our way to Philadelphia I have to be in Camden New Jersey and I'm gonna stay in Philly just across the bridge so that's where we are headed it's gonna take me about six hours to get there uh, which is a-okay I got my book on audible I have good music and I have all of you so today's vlogmas is going to be a little non-traditional. We are going to road trip kind of together and get to Philly safely and I will edit, upload, and publish this because I've committed to doing it on the day. But I was like, how will we fill six hours of driving and filming? I just can't be rambling. So over on my Instagram, if you're not following me there, you should be because it's honestly the easiest way to connect and I talk to you guys all the time over there. But over on my Instagram, I decided to launch a Q&A. So we're gonna go through a couple Q&A questions and answers and you'll learn a little bit about me. And if you choose one that sounds good to you, I would love to hear your answers down below that are kind of universal because I think the best thing about a community is learning from each other. I am on a new camera and I've adjusted the settings from yesterday after looking at the footage. So hopefully today looks a little bit better. And the camera I'm using, because a couple of you asked, is the DJI or DGI, I can't remember the exact acronym, but I'll link it, Action 2. So you will have access to that camera if you want to check it out, if you do content yourself. But I think I got the settings exactly right for some better content in the car. I also brought my charger so that when this camera dies, I can charge it up and then we can go back at it. So I am going to jump into the Q&A and this question showed up multiple times and it was, how did you end up in New York? So I was raised in Western Pennsylvania and also lived in West Virginia. That's where I went to undergrad. And during that time I was studying elementary education and my sister lived down in Charlotte, North Carolina. I moved down to Charlotte to teach, and that is where I met Steven, and we lived there. Oh, he'll correct me, but I believe we lived there for five years, four years together. I can't remember. And then Steven had a really cool opportunity. He works for the government to transfer to either Alaska, oddly enough, or to upstate New York. He opted for upstate New York because he's a Buffalo, New York native, and it made sense to be close to his family. I think there was a glimmer of Alaska happening. I actually interviewed at a school in Anchorage and got the position. Um, and the reason Alaska was a, like a legitimate viable option for us as a family is Stephen actually lived in Fairbanks, Alaska for quite some time when he was younger, but I'm so glad we ended up where we live. People asking about the jewelry I wear. So my band is like a really simple um, gold band. I also have a platinum band. That's my original band from Tiffany. That was um, something Steven like took me to Tiffany's. We went and tried on rings and I have a platinum band. That's like my go-to band that I wear most times. I need it polished and cleaned up because it's a little scratched. On this ring is a stack inspired by Christina Brawley. It is my aura ring and then my stack below, I was originally doing an eternity band that I had as a gift, um, but I actually have the Cartier Trio that I have stacked underneath my aura ring and I'm really happy with it. The thing about the aura ring as well as the Cartier Trinity stack size up because the aura ring has little like nodules in it that like help read and detect things so like if it says it's a nine it actually fits more like an eight and three quarters eight and a half um and then the trinity ring you have to size up a little bit because you have to wait for the bands looped with each other 
and I like it to be a little bit looser. It's also my like anxiety ring because I love like messing with it and twisting it around. And then necklaces change up often. I have the pieces I shared yesterday are really go-tos. My necklaces I switch up often and I have really expensive ones but also like Amazon finds. So they're just like a mix of things. I love Majuri. I might be saying that wrong. I don't have it in front of me but I've gotten a couple really nice pieces from them. But yeah, if I, if I ever have something on during a video, just ask me and I will link it for you because it really does come from a lot of places. I was wearing more bracelets. I have Cartier Love bracelets in gold and silver and I have um, another, I have one of the uh, Just Sin Clue bracelets from Cartier in gold. And I used to wear them a lot more, but I've really gotten away from bracelets a little bit. I have some really high-end pieces, but I also will pair it with a $15 fi uh, find that I have. Like that Pacherelle necklace I have and the Ideal necklace I have are pretty high-end fine jewelry. And I paired it with like a, a chain yesterday from Amazon that I think I paid like $9.99 for. So I like a mix. I like to also mix metals. That's why I love the Trinity ring because it kind of is your invitation to mix your metals because it embodies all of them for you. So yeah, that's a little bit about the jewelry. Lots of questions lately about like the jewelry I've been wearing. What's your bedtime lights out? This is an embarrassing question because there are days where I head up to bed at seven and I'll typically read for 30 minutes. So like lights out 7.30. Last night I checked my aura ring just for this question and it was 8.17 that I fell asleep. But I think it's all relative because I get up at 4 a.m. So I have to go to bed earlier in order to get like a good night's sleep. So seven, seven, anywhere between seven and eight, I feel is like, the pretty much sweet spot. Another question that you guys have asked a lot about is work-life balance. I don't think there is anyone in this world equipped to give advice on work-life balance uh, because I think it's probably the one thing we are all seeking the most and one of the hardest things to navigate and find. I felt at the end of last year, I felt that I had some of the best work-life balance I had ever had and I got some of the best results that I had ever gotten. And this year, it's been a little bit more difficult. I transitioned into a higher level leadership role and it's been a little bit more challenging with more being put on your plate. And I think I've come to learn and accept that there are just seasons with work-life balance. There will be seasons where it feels really great. There will be seasons where you have more time for life and there will be seasons where you have more time for work. And to just genuinely accept that as like part of life, which I know is not the answer that everyone wants to hear. But I do think there are some tips to trying to balance it out. So I think my perspective really changed in May of 2021. I had a binary pulmonary embolisms. I had a DVT in my leg. I had a really, really call. I was actually rushed into an ER and hospitalized for a few days and it was a very scary experience and the doctor was actually quite surprised that I made it through and I think that really shifted my perspective going into work and I found more balance and it also helped me build some better tools to support myself. So there are just some of there are just some non-negotiables. I love my job but I will try to quit it every single day and give back to my husband. So I try not to open my work laptop after seven o'clock at night. I try not to open up my work laptop or send emails over the weekend, because in all honesty, if you send or read an email on the weekend, there is nothing you can do about it until Monday. So it doesn't make sense to send it and it doesn't make sense to read it and respond to it because there's probably nothing you can really do until Monday when you get back into the office. And I find that that has helped me have better balance. There was a time where I spent my whole weekend going into work and doing work and then wondering why I was tired on Monday because I'd already worked the whole weekend. 
So I think I have set some really clear boundaries around that and then I do the best I can. And I make sure that I have at least 20 to 30 minutes a day where I do something that I love, whether that is reading or moving my body. I just try to carve out that time. It's one of the reasons I am such an early riser because I find that that sacred time between I would say four and 6 a.m., that time is my time. Steven doesn't need anything from me. The dogs don't need anything from me. My family doesn't need anything from me. My work colleagues and employees don't need anything from me. And it's like really my time. I have found that carving out that moment, and for you that moment could be at the end of the day or at a different time span, finding that time that is sacredly yours and using it for things that you enjoy or that bring you a sense of balance is really, really important. I know that's probably not the most helpful answer, but in some ways it might be exactly what you need to hear. But if you find an expert on work-life balance, I would love for you to point them my direction. I believe that Ariana Huffington might have the best perspective that I've read about work-life balance. I loved this question. It was, out of all the Christmas decor you have done, what is your favorite? thus far because I feel like every year I say it's my favorite um I really thought it was going to be this year and the more I look at the mantle there's a hundred things I would change about it but it's too far in but my favorite thing to do no matter what is my mantle and I will have to say that I think last year even though it lacked color was my favorite mantle just because of the simplicity and the cleanness. I loved using the dry leaves. I just like love the whole look of how that mantle turned out. So I would definitely say last year I think was my favorite, but I already have next year planned and I'm really excited about that. And I'm not taking it away from, I'm not taking away from this year. I think this year is stunning and it's beautiful. It's just, and it came together as well as I would want it. I would do some things differently as far as the colors. Um, but I mean, this color scheme was not a Christmassy one and it was hard to buy for. And I think I really did a good job, but I would say last year's mantle. And then the diametric opposite, I would say my stairway garland this year is a favorite too. So last year's mantle and this year's um, staircase garland are probably my two favorites and two completely different styles. So yeah, I think that's kind of where I would be. Although I would say I love, love, love the shape of my garland on my mantle this year, how I kept it asymmetrical and went one side up the mirror. Hands down, my favorite shape. I also love an asymmetrical moment in decor. Speaking of decor, that's the next question. Would you ever consider a career or have you ever considered a career in interior design? The answer is yes. I actually had the opportunity when we lived in Charlotte to help do some planning and styling for houses. And um, I really, really loved it. I love interior design. I feel like it's one of my biggest passions. It is where I find so much joy and I love thinking about things and being creative. And I also love the problem solving that comes with it based off of a space or trying to figure out, like I racked my brain and how I was going to get the garland to do exactly what I wanted this year. I love that problem solving aspect of it. If I ever had the opportunity to have my own line of some sort of decor or some sort of business around interior design, I think it is something I would jump at because it is such a passion of mine. But also the work that I do now is all my life's work and my calling. Biggest pet peeve, this one made me laugh because anyone who knows me already knows what my biggest pet peeve is. I almost wanna leave this one open-ended to see who ends up commenting in it. Uh, but in all honesty, my biggest pet peeve is timeliness. Uh, in personal life and professional life. For me, it is not about the act of being on time. It is more about the act of respect and the respect that you have for others. Because how dare you show up somewhere late because other people had to show up on time. And it shows you 
even if it even if not intended it sends a message that I think my time is more important than yours or that what I have going on is more important than what you have going on and for me I just don't operate that way and I want everyone to feel respected I also always go back to the fact that time is one of the most finite things we have on this earth and how dare I not honor that for you and also give it back to you when I have the opportunity to do so. So timeliness, hands down, biggest pet peeve. Could live anywhere besides New York, where would you live? I think Stephen and I would both say Arizona. We love Arizona. We've looked at real estate in Arizona. There is something about it when we go there, and we've been there a couple times. Um, we love it there. It is a place that brings us a lot of joy. It's a place that we just, I don't know, it feels like a second home, but it would be Arizona. And I think Steven's answer would be exactly the same. What are the ingredients of a long-term relationship like you and Steven? Oh my goodness. It's so funny because I feel like a lot of my colleagues and work partners and employees are very young and I often forget how far apart we are in age as well as like relationship status. Steven and I have been together for a very long time, like double digits long time. Uh, and I think some of the things that have made it last is like to also know that sometimes you just need space. Stephen and I have done a really good job and I would say it's gotten really good over the last five, six years around communicating our needs and understanding each other. Uh, Stephen is someone who will walk in the door from work and want to talk about the day and discuss it. And I'm a type of person who I need a second to decompress. And I think we have found a really good balance of giving that space and also finding the time to talk. <coughs> I also think it's okay to ask for what you need in a relationship, and I think Stephen and I do that really well. And because we've now been together so long, you don't really have to ask anymore because you know what you both need. I think this Vlogmas in particular, I think you're seeing a lot more of Stephen, which is exciting to me because I want everyone to know him and know how absolutely wonderful he is. Um, I think a key to a really good relationship is like do you laugh together and do you laugh together all the time and Stephen and I truly laugh together constantly and he is such an intellect that I find it as like a source of pride when I can make him laugh because he is such like he's such a sophisticated human being and I am not uh, that finding making him laugh brings me so much joy all right, friends, I just made it to the Kimpton Monaco. That's where I'm staying tonight. And then I'm going to change and go out on the city a little bit just so I can enjoy my time here. And then I'll come back and finish editing the blog. And then, yeah, but here's a room tour. So this is my bathroom. It's beautiful. I have like this freestanding tub and the shower all in one space. I love this dark red towel. Here's like the toilet room and then like a really simple beautiful sink and then I have a desk which is where I'll be editing this evening and then my TV stand and then this beautiful king bed I love like the print on print that is what the Monaco is known for so yeah I am going to um, I'm going to change throw in some jeans throw in a pair of different shoes and get going so all right let's go ahead and open day five Right here, Grow Gorgeous, a volume bodifying leave-in serum. Pour some sugar on me. Day five of Sugarfina. I just love their gummies. And these are the gummy strawberry hearts. All right. Day five. This is really cute. 25 looks bigger than in past years. All right, here is day five, and it is a perfumed soap in Dasan. It's a really good fragrance. Let's go ahead and open day five here for Saks. Oh my gosh, it's a mini nest candle in Moroccan amber. Oh. 
That smells like you're in like a market. We have to grab our girl Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you doing a better job this year. All right, day five. And they are like the little gummies similar to those textured ones I like from Sugarfina. So I'm not mad at that. And I don't believe those were in there last year. All right, friends, you are sitting on a ice bucket right now and I am finishing editing and I'm going to try to get this to you at a reasonable time. Um, and I also have to get to bed because I have to get up early. So I am going to end this like I end all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, be kind, kindness is free, give to everyone. Until next time, which will be tomorrow. Bye-bye.